x will uh, be unity or it will have value 1 in a time span of minus log x0 by s. Okay, when this a are the favorable properties and if small s less than 0, the x value will be 0 and as per as the, uh, the, the survival of the fittest or the natural selection is concerned, uh, by this simple mechanism we can explain and there is no problem. But problem starts after this because uh, it is uh, claimed that in the uh, DNA mutation uh, there is a random mutation uh, takes place. Though uh, till uh, at this time there are several opinions about uh, this randomness because uh, we can simply understand that in any system if there is randomness then uh, there is a little chance of betterment but uh, but the evolution theory claims that due to this random uh, mutation in the DNA, evolution takes place. <coughs> so the essential problem for the Darwinian theory is how to cope up with the continuing flood of adverse mutations from the triad problem of only the single mutation given by equation 1. Okay. So here at this stage, uh, this random mutation is not there. So simply up to this equation 2, we can very understand uh, easily the, the natural selection and that's why it has very much deeply penetrated into the minds of uh, the, uh, the people in general. But uh, one more thing is that uh, in this uh, equation 1, uh, it has not been normalized so that generation after generation stable population will be there. So that is one problem and also uh, that uh, random mutation has not been considered. So if we consider uh, that uh, in order to have the stable population from generation to generation, one parameter alpha that I have uh, uh, described by this equation three, maybe in this form, if we introduce this alpha, then we can have stable population generation after generation. Even if we suppose accept this uh, natural selection theory. Okay, so if we uh, imp uh, implement that uh, the alpha, then we will get the differential equation uh, dx by dt equal to sx into 1 minus x in equation 5. So some steps I am just skipping in order to have uh, the summary of the, uh, of the mathematics which is being described here. And finally, if we put the boundary condition here, then x will be equal to x0 by x0 plus e to the power minus st. And from this equation, we can get that in the, the in the theory of natural selection, even though it is claiming that uh, after certain time with the favorable properties only the uh, with, with the introduction of the uh, even the bad mutation, it will be going out. It is not true because here at any finite time, the small x is not going to be 1. It will be half only after the time span of minus log x0 by s. And also, this property a does not completely fix itself in the species in any uh, finite time. And a residue of the harmful mutation will always be there. So this is very interesting. That whenever this random mutation, even if we are incorporating or the, the stable population concept we are bringing that generation after generation it should have then this natural uh, selection theory is not going to work well. So if, if we assume now that uh, a residue of the disadvantageous property or this harmful mutation will be there, and there if we now uh, revise that this yr, uh, where r equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, up to r, be the fractions of the population with no defect, one defect, two defect in that way, and from the definition of the fraction, the sum of yi equal to 1. <coughs> and if we also implement that condition that generation after generation stable population will be there, we will get equations like this, 9, 10, and 11, where this y0, y1, yr, these are representing the fraction of the population after t plus 1 step, and in the right side it is at the t time span. And in that way, if we uh, modify those equations, uh, we will get uh, 
13, 14, and 15 equations. Okay, dy0 by dt, dyn by dt in that way, dyr by dt. And if we solve uh, these differential equations now along with the boundary conditions, y0 equal to 1, yr equal to 1, then uh, you will get uh, a different kind of scenario which earlier for no mutation we got that okay with favorable property small x will be 1 but it is not considering this table uh, population generation after generation when we are considering the condition of the uh, stable population generation after generation it is not this small x is not going to be 1 or that with only favorable property uh, the the population will lead to one or here when the uh, defects or the bad mutations are being considered then things are completely different here the solution is also not so simple like earlier cases for this 13 14 and 15 along with the boundary conditions of 16 so here in order to solve so some parts i am just keeping uh, okay so here in order to get the values of y0, y1, y2 in that way, yr, if we solve, you will get uh, a uh, expression where the statistical distribution will be there and that statistical distribution is uh, like Poisson's distribution where this, if we leave the y0 where y1, y1 means fraction of the uh, population, okay, where only one defect is there, y2 is the fraction of the population where two defects are there. So there, uh, if we plot this y1, y2 in that way, yr, so initially uh, its values are increasing, then it will reach a maximum and after that its values are decreasing. And the distribution pattern is like Poisson's distribution. I am skipping some part. Yeah, so uh, there we can see the person's distribution, okay, in equation 14. And in order to uh, solve it in a uh, uh, better way, uh, some trick is there. So one parameter Q was introduced. For Q equal to 0, uh, it will be uh, biologically uh, one best option that uh, permitting the least uh, penetration of defect into the next generation. That means natural selection is going to work when you are getting a distribution, a statistical distribution which is in the form of Poisson's distribution of the defects. That means after some defects are occurred, then only natural selection theory is going to, uh, going to work well, not before that. This is very interesting thing. So this equation 30, I think, yeah, oh yeah. The above equation is just the Poisson distribution for average value lambda. Lambda is the bad mutations uh, when each, uh, 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 each, uh, each offspring is uh, going to born. This lambda by 1 minus lambda into S. And this is the number of defects possessed by an average number of the population giving a reduction of fitness by this equation 31. So already fitness, up, uh, already when the fitness will be reduced by this, then only this uh, natural selection is going to happen. Okay, so uh, the conclusion of uh, this 33 also, the natural selection is able to prevent a situation in which the average individual has a fitness lowered by this exponential uh, or uh, e to the power minus lambda from worsening any further, however it cannot prevent the original situation from worsening. That means when the defects are very less or when at the beginning there is no defect, the natural selection is not going to work at all. But when defects are in the form of a statistical distribution or Poisson distribution, then only this natural selection, this theory is going to work. So in uh, summary of the asexual model, uh, I can just conclude these two points that natural selection is not a promoter of what is good in any absolute sense. But this natural selection can only favor what is better against what is worse. And this model, of course, can be extended for the bisexual model, uh, but their mathematics involved will be a uh, little uh, tough.
So conclusion from this uh, present asexual reproduction model or which are also the limitations of the natural selection theory that it is seen from the present theory that it can be made to work even in the limited degree when the present asexual model is changed to the sophisticated model of sexual reproduction. This uh, model presents an insuperable problem for the notion that life arose out of an abiological organic soup through the development of a primitive replicating system. A primitive replicating system could not have copied itself with anything like the fertility of present day systems. A favorable mutation is not irrevocably tied to all the bad mutations in the cell in which it arises. And for if the evolution by natural selection really worked in the abstract sense in which new Darwinians assert that it works, there, then there would be no need for plasmid transfer. It is uh, one a phenomena related to asexual reproduction. So this is the uh, mathematical part that uh, when this natural selection theory is going to work and how. And uh, the <laughs> spiritual viewpoint on the evaluation theory, uh, this is uh, uh, taken from our uh, ancient, uh, in India's ancient literature, Vedanta. So there the uh, de definition of evolution is uh, completely different. It describes that evolution is the journey of the conscious particle, living particle from one body to another at a time and space under the law of karma. Okay, so it is not like your this natural selection or the mutation of the DNA. It explains that evolution as the journey of the innumerable conscious particles of life or souls in time and space as they travel from one form of body to another under the laws of karma. This laws of karma is, I think, nowadays also uh, to some extent no, known in the OST as well because uh, as you saw, so you will reap. So this is uh, very much accepted at least in the uh, uh, educated people. For each living uh, entity's degree or level of consciousness will determine the direction of his evolutionary path. It's not that it is one way, but it is both way. If its consciousness goes down, you can be going down also in the, uh, in the, in the spaces. Darwin's mistake was that he could not conceive uh, the concept of consciousness or the living particle or the soul. Thus, Vedanta does not accept Darwin's theory of evolution. Under norm normal circumstances, consciousness evolves linearly as well as stepwise. The different bodies or forms to accommodate a specific conscious being are already arranged by nature within a cosmic plan. The biological forms impose a limitation in the development of consciousness. Therefore, different degrees of consciousness are expressed through different bodies. So here uh, in the last uh, two, three uh, presentations, I think I was just looking uh, about the uh, discussion of consciousness, but here Vedanta is telling in a more vivid way uh, the different degrees of consciousness. That consciousness can be categorized into five broad categories, which are covered, shrunken, budding, blooming, and fully bloomed. These trees and plants, for example, fall in the category of covered consciousness. Worms, insects, etc., are in shrunken consciousness. Human beings are in the budding consciousness, but they have the potential to go to blooming and then fully bloom consciousness as well. So, in the human form of life, when one begins to sincerely inquire about the absolute truth, one's bird like spiritual consciousness begins to expand or evolve, and this is the blooming state of consciousness. Then when as a result of his inquiry, the human being practices regulated spiritual discipline, he evolves further and further. Finally, he attains complete transcendental realization, God consciousness, the fully bloomed state of consciousness. So the last three is applicable, that budding, blooming, and fully blooming, these are related to human being. But before that, I have already explained in which category they are. So what Vedantic cosmology supports? In Vedic cosmology, there are periodic cycles known as yoga cycle, ages, and also creation and annihilation of the material world along with living beings takes place 
continuously like changes of seasons. There are four yugas, Satta, Treta, Dhapar, Kali. When the appropriate cosmic cycle appears, many different biological forms manifest in that particular yuga cycle. Also, according to Vedanta, since all the biological forms have already been existing in subtle states, either manifested or unmanifested embodied life on Earth would start in principle from any organism, bacteria, plants, birds, animals, human beings, etc., according to the certain laws of karma. So this thing also we can uh, think in this way that just now this rainy season is over. So during the rainy season, you can observe that there are many new plants on the soil. But once uh, this season is over, you will not see those for the one year. Again, when the next rainy season will come, you will again see those. So what does it mean that those are not existing or those are existing but in a subtle state? So in that way, uh, there is no question of evolution of the Darwin uh, theory. So here it is, everything is existing, but it manifests and unmanifest from time to time. This is the evolution theory which uh, Vedantic cosmology is telling about. So thus, Vedantic cosmology supports the simultaneous manifestation of many organisms, and this principle is in direct contradiction with the Darwinian philosophy. So this is last thing is very important because it is going to give uh, the uh, the conclusion. So uh, the conclusions of my presentations are the applicability of the modern biological evolution theory has been described considering a single parent offspring or the asexual model using Fred Hoyle's mathematical theory, starting from a simple feedback differential equation solutions were obtained on key issues of natural selection for various cases. The studies show that the Darwinian uh, theory is uh, correct in a limited sense. Uh, the performance of the mathematical model, this federal model is quite impressive and suggests applicability for the other cases of reproduction. And finally, Vedantic viewpoint on the evolution theory which supports the simultaneous manifestation of many organisms has also been explained. So these are the references. Thank you for your patience. Thank you so much. Now, if anyone want to ask any question, feel free to ask. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Z. This is the first time I've been hearing about, you know, I'm from the uh, bioscience background, and you have proof in this is a very wonderful mathematical formulation of the natural selection and evolution. This is amazing. There were some uncertainties in the theoretical th evolution theory of, you know, this our Darwin evolution. But with this proof of uncertainties of natural selections, there is some, uh, you know, valid proof that Natural selection is not valid because edging is also there. <laughs> okay, now my question is, uh, sir, this consciousness, you know, um, that has been talking for so much in, uh, say, in uh, quantum mechanics, also in uh, chemistry, also in uh, biology, can we also formulate it in a mathematical formula, like in the, you know, thermodynamics laws of, you know, this energy cannot be created nor be destroyed. Like the consciousness, like in the biocentrism of the, the uh, uh, dissolution of the body, consciousness, like as an energy also exists in a different dimension in the space-time. Can you all please also formalize in the future in the mathematical <laughs> formulation? Just before my presentation, one presentation was that uh, how to axiomatize uh, the consciousness by Professor Heng, but uh, I, I, I don't think it is so easy, in my opinion. This consciousness is uh, the uh, property of the fundamental uh, living particle, so I don't think it can be axiomatized in a very good way. Next question, please. Sir, uh, while listening to the speakers, it's becoming clear to me that 
Each speaker uh, means differently by consciousness. First, I would like to know what you mean by consciousness. My second question is that, what do you mean by human beings are evolving continuously? Does your idea of human beings evolving between different states have an impact on the equality of all human beings? Uh, I think I, I, I skipped uh, this part. Uh, so uh, if I uh, explain that as per Padma Purana, there are uh, 9 lakh forms of life in water, 20 lakh forms of trees and other plants, then there are 11 lakh species of small living beings, insects and reptiles, and 10 lakh species of birds. Finally, there are uh, 30 lakh uh, varieties of beasts and 4 lakh human species. So, uh, <laughs> if I ask that, uh, what is the meaning of this last part, that 4 lakh human species? Uh, how you can actually, uh, on the basis of consciousness, uh, uh, in our Indian, uh, uh, these spiritual traditions, we are not at the same level. So there are four lakh human species are there. Not that human is one species. Four lakh human species are there based on their consciousness. Because I am not same with that person, Professor Jolta or Professor Bhor. We all are actually different. And it is not a very uh, small issue, this consciousness. It is a very big topic, in-depth topic. So. In just five minutes, uh, it cannot be concluded, but uh, the consciousness is not same for all human beings. That's why I uh, just uh, showed that even, uh, okay, uh, in human being, how the consciousness is developed from budding state to fully bloom state, that also these last three points are explaining. We can, uh, we can have better consciousness by practicing something. And in that way, we can evolve. It is not that from other living uh, uh, species to uh, human being or from human being to other living species. Uh, even by exercising our this consciousness or by having better consciousness, we, or the, uh, we can transmigrate ourselves or the living particle can transmigrate to other species that I want. Uh, it is not audible, please. Can any human being practice all the spiritual disciplines that you are talking about? Yes. Thank you, sir. There is no restriction. One more question. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, you have explained very nicely in the natural selections and uh, Darwin's concept, and uh, which is uh, based on consciousness, it uh, uh, contradicts Darwin consciousness. Yes. And uh, my question is that uh, whatever you have explained, is it going to be implemented on the school book or college book, test book, in the government section, government uh, publication? So that is a tough task, but uh, we have to do it scientifically, at least we are correct, then we can try for implementation. And of course, I think uh, nowadays, in many places, uh, uh, they are putting aside this Darwin's theory, in many places that I know, at least, in West as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this was indeed a lovely interaction and a talk on the subject, Fred Hall's Mathematical Theory of Natural Selection by Dr. Dibashish Khan, Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT, Varnasi. So I'd like to request now Professor Luke Bermans will do the honor to give the memento to Dr. Devashish Khan. May I request them, please call upon the stage. Thank you so much. Give a big round of applause. And I'd like to request again, Professor Luke Bermans will do the honor to give the memento to Dr. Devashish Khan. Thank you so much. Kindly, sir, please be seated. 
and uh, it was indeed a lovely sessions all you have been gone through thank you so much so now i'd like to request shri shushan sharma alumnus iit guwahati to move ahead the cultural session thank you so much thank you ankita good evening everyone having spent the whole day listening to the lectures you all must be enlightened or maybe tired if you are enlightened to add to that we have some program here if you are tired also this program will further enlighten you so we are moving into the program which is going to be a different type of conference our conference always you know is accompanied by this cultural programs because art and culture science they go together uh, art and culture is part of the spirituality so we have with us our friend shushan sharma to take you through this journey of culture program today and tomorrow thank you very much good evening uh it's really i feel very good when i hear my name <laughs> so welcome everyone uh i can see that uh, the hall is almost packed very nice and uh, we have been uh, delving through so many topics of mathematics mathematics and reality right and uh, mathematics and poetry right mathematics and arts how about it what do you think it's a good idea is it a good idea mathematics and beauty mathematics and dance right okay very good so <clears throat> our country uh, is a very culturally rich country it has almost every state has got its own style of music and dance so today uh, we are going to present in front of you two different states the, the culture from two different states but you will enjoy that even a single state has got so many varieties so without further ado let me start inviting the performers and i request all of you beforehand please be ready with the applauses there should not be any dearth of applauses at any point of, in fact i don't have to say that it will it should come from heart and it will come from heart thank you very much so the first performance is by rangani ketan group from manipuri this yes, from manipur and they are going to perform dhol cholam what is that this is a manipuri drum dance executed by drummers wow <laughs> in wild ecstasy to a particular rhythmic pattern this dance is performed by male artists only during the holy festival so with huge round of applause let us welcome the artists from manipur state
Wasn't it beautiful? Yes. Sir, was it? Uh, was beautiful, right? So the applause came from the heart. Very good. So this is just the beginning. Next, uh, may I invite uh, Professor Abhishek Mohanty to, sorry, Professor Adit Mohanty, who is going to introduce his group from Odisha. The name of this troupe is Adruta Children of Rava Academy. They are going to present some Odissi items, and our professor is going to talk in detail about that. Please. Namaskar to all of you. It's uh, really a pleasure, privilege, and honor as well to be here in the midst of uh, the galaxy of intellectuals from different parts of the world. And I had the good fortune of listening to the last part. And I wish I were present from the since the morning. So uh, the inevitable happens. Friends, uh, uh, you are going to witness what is a dance by the inmates of Adurta Childrenam unit of Rava Academy. Many of you must be knowing that Odisha is known for, Odisha is, known, Odisha is a land of rivers and temples. And religious consciousness is embedded in the collective psyche of Odias. It is one of the classical dance forms in India. Odisha is known for its subtlety of gestures, postures, eye movements, three different bands, vangis, mudras. It has also mathematics, it has also grammar. When you deviate, you are caught, people say that you are diluting, that is fusion. Fortunately, our guru, Sri Bharat Charan Giri, who is an internationally reputed teacher, has ensured that Odyssey in its purest and pristine form is preserved and practiced by the children. The children who are going to witness, they are internationally acclaimed artists. They have traveled across the frontiers of India to showcase the cultural treasure of Odisha outside. I will take, I will beg your indulgence for two, three sentences. I cannot help it. You know, the whole of spiritual science stands on three fundamental postulates. First, all the phenomenal diversities have come from one source. And scientists are increasingly corroborating this. As you go back, you trace back the evolution, there is homogeneity. So the whole creation has go come from a singular point. Second, after the gamut of evolution, we are all heading towards one point. That also is being increasingly corroborated by science. The more and more evolve, the heterogeneities disappear. Second. Third is, the point of origin and the destination, they are not two, they are also same. They could have been two. That means, whether you call it, you know, in a different form, Big Bang from a singular point is started, dimensionless point, it is expanding universe, at a time it, it will, there will be crunch, again it will contract, again it come, will come to a dimensional point. Now this singular point has been termed as pure consciousness. Here consciousness as such, it is not a quality of something as such. And that pure consciousness, which is impersonal, because when nothing was there, he was there. So from one many and again many to one, this is the gamut of evolution. And what is the nature of that one? Now that one creates and attracts also. That is why it has been termed as Krishna. Chris means to attract. So that supreme consciousness who having created it is attracting it. Our dance item would be on Krishna. Krishna Sri Purushottama. The lyric is by Prabhat Ranjan Sarkar who has composed 5018 songs. It is one of them. Krishna Giti, Siva Giti. So here it tells us what is the nature of Krishna. That Krishna consciousness. Krishna with flute is only a, con a manifestation of that impersonal entity, as and when there is a decadence of values, he has to come embodied to salvage the humanity out of the darkness, Sumerian darkness. Now, friends, 
in vedanta there is a there is a uh, analogy uh, one, one one half a minute a, a spider the creation has creation and the creator has been 